The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, emissary from a world you never made. We are commanded to forgive our enemies, but nowhere are we told to forgive our friends. Is this why an old philosopher advises, treat your friend as if he will one day become your enemy, and your enemy as if he will one day be your friend? As you can see, the whole business is not only thoroughly mixed up, but it also rests on a foundation of shifting sands. And why not? Isn't that the story of our lives? Our mystery drama, The Safe Judge, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden and Patsy Bruder. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Hope makes a good breakfast, but a bad supper. Probably because hope is like the morning glory which blooms in the rosy brightness of the dawn and wilts and fades in the pitiless heat of the sun. Well, we could continue in this vein, but surely you get the point. For a specific example of hope, consider the magnificently appointed sports car moving along the turnpike just this side of the speed limit. Why? Because the sleekly handsome young man behind the wheel fervently hopes he will not be stopped. But his hopes are about to be dashed. Hold over, punk! All right, out of the car. Keep your hands where I can see them. Well, well, how did I do? How? Well, look, I, I, I wasn't doing 155. Let's see your license. No, no. Take it out of the wallet. That's it. Well, I wasn't breaking the law. Joseph Mangle Jr. You wouldn't be Big Joe Mangle's kid, would you? Yeah, that's me. Oh, I didn't know I had myself a celebrity here. Okay, copper, now that you know the score, I'll be on my way. That's so? Well, you mean you want to tangle with my old man? Don't tangle with Mangle. That's the word, huh? You bet your sweet life, copper. So before you get into trouble... Turn around. Now face the hood of your car. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Lean what are you... forward. Place your hands on the hood. Hey, what is this? You're being frisked. That's what this is. Yeah, well, you're asking for more trouble than you can handle, copper. Well, well, what do we got here? Oh, wait a minute. Listen. This cellophane envelope filled with this nice sparkling white powder. You must have a couple of pounds of it. Well, it's it's saccharin. I'm, I'm bringing it to a friend of mine who's on a diet. No kidding. Well, it's the truth. Well, if it's the truth, you shouldn't mind if we have it analyzed at the lab. Oh, listen, officer. Hey, listen, I've just been promoted from copper to officer. You can't arrest me. Why not? Because I'm Joe Mangle's kid. You'd be crazy to do it. I know. Don't tangle with Mangle. Hey, wait. You can't put those handcuffs on me. I just did, didn't I? Listen, officer, let's... Let's talk sense, huh? Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, ho. Here it comes, the old briberoo. Yeah, sure, that's it. That's what you were after all the time. Okay. I got 2,000 bucks on me. I'll give it to you. That's another charge, attempting to bribe an officer. Give me a break, will you? Scum like you, you push this poison, you destroy people's lives. I got a better idea. Take the stuff. It's never been cut. It's pure. Why, you... You know how much this is worth on the street? Seventy-five thousand. I gotta knock every one of your teeth out. A hundred grand. Oh no, no, I better not mush you up. Garbage like you has to be treated with kid gloves. You can be rich. Get in the car. What do you want to arrest me for? What's in it for you? What are you sweating about, punk? With your old man's connections, you probably get off with a slap on the wrist. I ain't scared of the law. I'm scared of the old man. I'm doing this freelance. Don't you see? You don't know. That's why you can't take me in. Can I? Watch me. Give me a break. 
the old man finds out, he'll kill me. What do you want for me, Marie? I got him out on bail, didn't I? A hundred grand. So you got him out on bail. <laughs> He's your own son. Your own flesh and blood. Hey, he's a bum. Now, don't say that. Ain't it true? I sent him to college. He still talks like a bum. I never got past the fourth grade, and he don't talk no better than I do. Well, you can't let him go to jail. They caught him. He had the heroin on him. He was framed. Oh, uh, sure. He was framed. And the cop who stopped him. They call him Mad Dog Harlow. I want that cop destroyed. I know that cop. Everybody knows that cop. That cop is the biggest hero in town. Anything happens to him in a paper... I don't care. I want you to prove Joey was framed. Oh, come on, Marie. Who'd buy such a story? It has to be a frame-up. Uh, uh, okay, okay, all right. Well, let me tell you what we can reasonably expect. I can pull wires for the DA to go easy. That's not good enough. Nobody beats a drug rap if they find the stuff on him. I tell you, he was framed. So we arrange for a judge to give him uh, an indeterminate sentence. That means he can be out in six months. That's not good enough. It's the best I can do. I told him to keep his hands clean, but he's a bum. Yeah. And where did he learn how to be a bum? Marie, you got to accept the facts of life. His name is Joe Mangle Jr. He gets caught with the drugs. He's got to go to jail. There's a limit to what even I can do. But whatever he is, that's how you raised him. He's going to have a clean record. No convictions. You owe him that. That punk? I don't owe him nothing. Well, you owe me that. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care who you have to buy. But you're gonna get him off. Nancy. Oh, Daddy, I didn't hear you come in. What is that? What do you think? It sounds like some poor cat being tortured. <laughs> this is the most beautiful music, Daddy. It is? Your ears are culturally attuned to a clearly stated theme and definite variation. Whereas... Uh, do, do you mind shutting it off? <sighs> Barbarian. <laughs> no, I'm just an old classicist. But this is the oldest classical music in the world. There was a visiting lecturer at the college. He had these tapes of Chinese Shang Dynasty ritual dances. I see a classmate of yours has been arrested. Who? Joseph Mangle, Jr. Classmate? I don't think he's been to anthropology twice the whole semester. You know him? Oh, just by sight. What did he do? He was caught in possession of a few pounds of heroin. Do you think he's guilty? Well, dear, that's why he would be given a trial. Oh, Daddy, must you always talk like a judge? But I am a judge. How else am I supposed to talk? Joe Mangle Jr., his father's the biggest racketeer in the country. Well, as to that, my dear, there is no solid evidence... But everybody he... knows it. The same way everybody knows Joe Mangle Jr. is guilty of pushing drugs. How does everybody know that? Because... He's the type. And with that simple statement, my dear, you have just annihilated the Constitution of the United States and everything it's supposed to stand for. Uh, Joseph, I consented to this meeting because I was told it was extremely urgent. Back off, Ashworth. You consented to this meeting because I asked you to come here. And it's politically dangerous for me to be seen with you. What's it about? My boy. Yes, I read about it. I'm sorry. He's a fine lad. He's a punk, and you and I know it. Well, I'm sure something can be done. What? Handled properly, he could get three to five and be out in, say, uh, 18 months. That's not good enough. I disagree. If he were Joe Nobody Jr., he'd get 20 years without any chance of parole. I want him acquitted. <laughs> acquitted? Hey, you heard me, Ashworth. Well, that's impossible. Everything's impossible till you figure out how to do it. And then you don't have a problem. Joseph, this is really impossible. 20 years ago, you wanted to run for office. The machine said no. 
I said yes. Everybody said impossible. <laughs> Look where you are today. That was different. Today, you and me, we are the machine. Now I want Joey off, and I want you to stop saying impossible. I don't see how it can be done. Let me give you a scenario. It was figured out by Harry Anderson. He's going to be Joey's lawyer. And he's clever enough, but he's no magician. We got a cop by the name of James J. Harlow, better known as Mad Dog. He's a mad dog because he don't listen to reason. No way you can buy him off or head him off. He goes by the book. Which makes everything tougher for Joey since Harlow is the arresting officer. Okay. Harlow's had it in for me personally for years. This goes way back. I was a punk. He arrested me for breaking and entering. Uh, some friends of mine got me off, so he's been making remarks ever since. Huh? What kind of remarks? How I own the judges, the DA, the government. The bigger I got, the crazier he got. He's a very popular cop. Uh, but he's an unbalanced cop, you see. He's been so eager to hang something on me that he stops my son. Why? The kid wasn't speeding. Arlo don't even claim that. So, why did he stop Joey? Ask yourself. Why? What else? It comes down to stop and frisk, which is legal in this state. Uh, only if the officer can show reasonable cause. Now, why does Harlow stop Joey? Because, uh, yeah, huh. the kid don't have any record. He got no reason to suspect the kid's into anything. He stops him only to uh, harass him because he's my kid. Hmm? Possible. And because he's out to get me, he plants the stuff and he brings the kid in for possession. Oh, Joe, no, 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 it won't wash. No jury will acquit Joey. Uh, that's true. Anderson says the same. It don't matter what kind of a story we tell. That jury is going to hang Joey. It's true. They'll take one look at Harlow's honest face. He looks like Abe Lincoln without the beard, and that's the case. The idea is, Ashworth, it mustn't go to the jury. How do you stop it from going to the jury? After Anderson presents his evidence, he's going to ask the judge for a dismissal of the charge. Oh. Well, how can you be sure the judge will play along? I mean, you can't make sure a judge is in this town. Well, of course, but up to a point, this is a drug rap. It's enough to make any jurist run scared. That's why we need a safe judge, an absolutely safe judge. Joseph, you know as well as I do, given this kind of case, where can we find one? That's your problem, Ashworth. Your problem. Let's see, it was Will Rogers who said, Politics is applesauce. One thing for sure, it's not an occupation for green apples. What we've been overhearing these past few minutes are a couple of smart apples working on a proposed turnover of justice. Well, the plot thickens, or we should say ripens, when I return with Act Two in just a few moments. Your powder dry has always been sage advice. However, young Joseph Mangle Jr. would have been better off had he not been caught carrying a certain type of powder in the first place. Young Joseph is out on bail. Meanwhile, many wheels are turning and spinning and grinding. And right now, a certain number is about to come up. Daddy? Hmm? Oh, see here, young lady, don't you know you're not allowed to enter a judge's private chambers without knocking? I thought I'd come downtown take you to lunch. Well, why aren't you in school? Well, I... Daddy, I... Darling, something's wrong? I... I don't know how to say this, Daddy. I... I just don't know what it means. Well, come on, sit down and tell me. I heard it on the radio. What 
did you hear on the radio? I was listening to the news, and I... I heard that you're not going to run for re-election. Teddy, you didn't tell me. Of course I'm going to run again. But according to the broadcast, they said that you decided to retire. Well, how could they say that? I have no intention of retiring. Someone must have gotten things turned and twisted. Daddy, call Uncle Ed. Why? So you can get to the bottom of this. The bottom of what? I... I have this feeling that something is wrong. Oh, you just have the most active imagination. <laughs> Daddy, call Uncle Ed. But it's silly. You can't pay attention to every unfounded bit of rumor and gossip. It'll make me feel better. Oh, all right. It'll make you feel better, too. I'm calling him on his direct private line. Hello there, Senator Ashworth. What are you doing at home? Protecting my absentee record. Ben, how are you? First rate, Ed. Uh, Ed, there was a strange bit of news on the air about me. Oh? Was there? It seems I've decided to retire. Who told that to whom and on whose authority? Uh, ben, it's a complicated story. Oh? Oh, well, yes, of course. I'm glad to hear it's a completely unfounded rumor. And it's more than just a rumor. It's, um, unfortunately, it's a fact. I, um, I was about to call you. Uh, dinner tonight? Uh, wait a second. Uh, Nancy, dear, you do have classes this evening, don't you? Yes, Daddy. The traditional designs of medieval heraldry. Ah, uh, y yes, Ed, I'm free for dinner. Uh, but Ben, I have... No, no, Ben. Really, I'm free. N nothing complicated. I'll meet you at Frascati. But Ben... At seven. Sure thing. Bye, Ed. Absolutely nothing to it, Nancy. You sure? Poor Uncle Ed. He was so embarrassed, he insisted on taking me to dinner. <laughs> And, uh, how's Nancy? Nancy's just fine. Has she found herself yet? I mean, what is it this month? Poet, musician, ballet dancer? Ed, well, uh, I'm her godfather, and I take my responsibilities seriously. Ed, who's out to get me? And why are you holding still for it? Nobody's out to get you, Ben. It's just there's a general movement all through the party to present a new and youthful image in our candidate. Oh, that's nonsense, and you know it. Age and experience are what people look for in a judge. Are you going to tell me the story or not? There is no story. This is the way the decision was made. And after 30 years, I'm out. Ben, I fought for you. Yes, my record, I, I have the highest rating. Ben, I couldn't save you. But what am I going to do? I can't start all over again as a lawyer. I... I know it's tough. You know I never took a nickel. And the fact is, I don't have a nickel. Martha's illness took everything I saved. And now there's Nancy's education. No. No, I'm not going to hold still for it. I'll call a press conference. I'll say I'm being denied the nomination. And, and what good will that do? You'll create a three-day sensation and you'll have made yourself a lot of enemies in the party. I don't seem to have too many friends there now. They leaked to the retirement story so you could get out gracefully. Get out gracefully? To go where? And do what? You'll never have to worry. We'll find a job for you. But not a judge's job. Now, you know the game we're in. Okay, Ed. I'll let you off the hook. Good night. Now, Ben. Ben, don't run off now. We'll have another cup of coffee. We'll talk, all right? About what? Friendship? Gratitude? The just rewards of 30 years of honest service? <laughs> Hello? I see by the papers the case is coming up before Judge Talbot. Uh, yes, Joseph, that's how it worked out. Is he safe? I think so. Ben Talbot never took a nickel in his life, and he won't start now. But if the guy can't be bribed, how can you make sure 
very safe. I didn't say he couldn't be bribed. I'm only saying he won't take money. How do you figure to convince him to see reason? I'm letting him convince himself. You mean as Talbot's been assigned a case and we don't have an understanding with him? We'll have one, Joseph. We better. My wife, Marie, don't leave me live. You think you're sitting pretty in Washington, but leave me tell you. You ain't that big, I can't knock you down. And if you do, I can drag you with me. I can promise you, Junior's as good as acquitted. Uh, ben, I know it's very late. What do you want, Ed? May I come in, please? What do you want, Ed? I, uh, I see you've been assigned to the Mangle case. I'm surprised they picked me. Are you? I was sure the old man could have pulled strings to have it held before one of his friends. Oh, no, no, no. It was due for your calendar, and that's where it went. Well, given one thing or another, it'll probably run past election day, so I'll go out in a blaze of glory. My last case. You still haven't answered my question. What do you want? I, uh... I haven't slept in a week. Neither have I. What kept you awake? Ben, I told certain people to... to go jump in the lake. Yes? Because I felt that's what you would have told them. That is, had they asked you. Had they asked me what? Exactly six days ago, these people, and who they are is immaterial at this point, asked me to make you an offer... To do what? They asked me because you and I are so close. Get to the offer, Ed. I knew it was something completely alien to your nature, and so I said, gentlemen, forget it. Well, that must have been some offer. It was. But I realize now I... I really don't have the right to answer for you. Whatever it is, you are the one who has to refuse it or accept it. I assume it's a deal... Of course. I've never made a deal in 30 years. I know that. And now that I'm at the end of my career, this is no time to start. That's right, Ben. Except this deal would mean it's not the end of your career as a judge. Oh? Yes. That story about your retiring. Well, there'd be a statement in no uncertain terms to the media that there was a misunderstanding. That the party is proud to have you as our nominee because you have been a beacon light in the halls of justice. And so forth. And your re-election would be assured as usual. Provided? Yes. The deal. The Mangle case. What am I supposed to do? Throw it out of court. Well, the boy was caught red-handed. Ah, well, aren't you prejudging the case? Oh, excuse me. The defense will contend the boy was illegally stopped and searched. That the arresting officer has a history of vindictiveness toward the family. And finally, that the officer planted the drugs on the boy. I see. Well, if the defense is so positive, why even talk deal with me? Any judge would throw it out. You never know once the trial starts. So we need a safe judge. We. You're part of it, Ed. It affects the party. The answer is no. Well, I knew that. But I felt I had to present it. So that's why there was that rumor of retirement to soften me up. You're the only judge up for re-election. I tell you what I find particularly offensive, Ed. The fact that it deals with drugs... These people are the scum of the earth. Oh, he's just a boy. This, to me, is the most vicious of all crimes. Now, I'm not saying I can't be bought. That would be presumptuous. But in a drug situation, never. That depraved, but... Why, he even goes to Nancy's school. No, no, no. That's my answer. No. I respect you for it, Ben. No, you don't. You think I'm a fool. 
thanks for presenting me with the deal. But my answer has to be no. Well, right now, there isn't any answer. Oh, yes, there is. You're going to preside at the trial. Hear the evidence, and who knows? When the defense attorney asks for dismissal of the charges, you may think quite sincerely on the basis of the facts that he's right. In return for which, I get the renomination. And my judicial career will bloom brighter than ever. Coincidence. Coincidence. Isn't that the way life is, Ben? Good night, Ed. Uh, let's have lunch one day this week. Let's not. There was nothing personal in this, Ben. Get out. Huh? Good night, Ben. Daddy. What? Oh, Daddy. Uh, oh, Nancy, I... I thought you were asleep, Nancy. I was. I heard talking in here and it woke me. It was Uncle Ed, wasn't it? Uh, y yes, yes. He, uh, just came over for a chat and a nightcap. No, he didn't, Daddy. I heard every word. Nancy... I am so proud of you, Daddy. I can't tell you how much. I don't really know what I'm going to do after November. Daddy, don't worry. Being a judge, that's the only trade I know. But if you were to do what Senator Ashworth proposes, then you really wouldn't be a judge anymore. Even if you got promoted all the way up to the Supreme Court. There you are. You just placed everything in perspective for me. Uh, Mrs. Mango, this is an unexpected pleasure. Unexpected, yes. A pleasure, no. What uh, can I do for you? I just hope you've already done it. Now, Joey goes to trial tomorrow. I don't know this Judge Talbot. I'm sure that everything will work out. You're sure? Well, that's not good enough. Well, life, my dear Mrs. Mango, can never be a hundred percent. Well, it had better be. Joey gets off clean. Oh, there's trouble. Now, Mrs. Mango, Don't I... Mrs. Mango me, Senator. Believe me, if it doesn't work out, I'll start telling everything I know, and I know everything. And a lot of people, some of whom are in very high places, are going to wind up in jail. No, I'm fighting here for my kid. I, I, I fully understand your position, Mrs. Mangle. And nobody had better try to shut me up the hard way either. Because what I've got is written. And it's in a safe place. Please, Mrs. Mangle, you're becoming unduly overwrought. Yes or no? Has Judge Talbot been made safe? The answer, Mrs. Mangle, is yes. Definitely. Certainly. Unequivocally. Yes. How does he know? That's not what we heard from Ben Talbot himself. The answer must be that Senator Ashworth knows something we don't know. Or is he whistling in the dark? Say what you like about Senator Ashworth, you must admit the man lives dangerously. Hopefully, everyone in this perilous situation will survive into Act Three, which I will bring you in just a few moments. In this world, so many fritter away their lives in frustration and boredom. So many work at meaningless routines. They are truly fortunate who take joy in their labor, who find in each day's work a challenge and an adventure. Such a man is Judge Ben Talbot. To him, the bench is his whole life. He savors every moment. The law has been a holy temple, and he a devoted priest. And now, he will be driven from that temple unless he chooses to defile it and either choice is absolutely intolerable daddy you haven't eaten a thing 
The trial starts today? Ah, yes, dear. You throw the book at that Joe Mangle Jr. Now, darling, a man is innocent until he's proven guilty. Everybody knows he's a young punk. Well, he's not being tried for that. How can anybody doubt his guilt? Oh, he must receive a fair trial. Absolutely. You give him a fair trial and then send him to jail. Now, Nancy. For life. You've got to do it. You have no other choice. But, my dear, I haven't heard the evidence yet. They forced you to do it. When they offered you that deal, that was proof that he's guilty. I, I mustn't even discuss this case. I never want to see Senator Ashworth again. But, darling, he's your godfather. Is there some way we can repeal that? Now, look, if you don't run along, you'll be late for classes. How did you survive all these years in politics? A man like you who's honest and incorruptible. Darling, don't get the wrong idea about politics. There are a great many honest people in it. I think most are. It's just that here and there, now and then, someone steps in and says, look, here's how things can be if... Uh, well, it only happened to me once. And if that vicious animal, that Joe Mangle Jr. hadn't been caught with drugs... It might never have happened to you at all. I hate him. It's time for you to go to school. And for me to go to work. Hello, Ben. What are you doing here? Well, this is my club, too. What do you want? You never return my calls. I'm too busy. How's the trial coming? I'm sure you're keeping up with it. Ben, I want to apologize. For what? For my part in the sandbagging of Ben Talbot. Okay. I accept your apology. Why don't we say good night? I never realized it, I suppose, but I... I do have a conscience. Well, that's your problem. What I did to you was inexcusable. All of this is obvious. It doesn't need to be said. Well, I don't think I realized how much the bench meant to you until we, until we had that talk. I didn't realize it was your whole life. That if you couldn't be a judge, you'd have no place to go. And that your, your life, for all practical purposes, would come to an end. I, 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 I didn't realize that. Oh, yes, you did. Ben, believe me. And your purpose in cornering me here tonight is to make sure that I realize it. You're scared, aren't you? No, Ben. You promised Big Joe that I'd be a safe judge. Your career is riding on it, too. That's <laughs> funny. I can destroy both of us. Ben, I'm telling the truth. I'm sorry for what I did. You have to believe that. Is that the truth? Or is the truth you've come here to tighten the screws if you can? Ben. We'll never know. And I'll tell you something else we'll never know. If it should so happen that I decide to dismiss when his lawyer asks for it, we'll never know. Did I do it because of the evidence or because I want to keep my job? I'll never know that. Now, look, Ben, I, I, I mean sincerely. And that's why I can never forgive you. You robbed me of the most precious thing I ever had. The knowledge that I was judging without an ulterior motive. I don't know what I'm going to do. The evidence washes over me like ocean waves and it dries off like water in the sun. None of it stays with me. If I dismiss, am I doing it because I'm afraid? You know, if I refuse to dismiss, am I doing it because I'm vindictive? Regardless of the decision, now I feel I've lost control. What reason did you have for stopping young Joe's car? I looked suspicious. Why? Well, when you're a cop, 
You develop a kind of instinct for a suspicious character. And you claim you didn't stop young Mr. Mangle just to harass him. Well, look, he had the stuff on him, didn't he? Your name? King. Daisy King. You, uh, have a criminal record, Miss King? Yeah, I guess so. What have you done? Well, I've been... I've been busted now and again for pushing. I... Nothing big, you understand. Just little stuff. Were you ever arrested by Officer Harlow? Yeah, I was. That's a lie! I'll rephrase that, Miss King. Were you ever stopped by Officer Harlow? Yeah, I was carrying heroin. A couple of bags. Good stuff. He didn't book me. He just took the stuff and... and told me to beat it. Well, that's... that's a lie! Your Honor, what is the case the prosecution has presented? A single witness is an officer whose hostility to the defendant and the defendant's family is, to say the least, notorious, and may even be an indication of a serious imbalance. He had no legal reason to stop the defendant, and as to the question, where could he have secured so much heroin to plant on the defendant, it has been testified that he could have built up a supply over a period of time. In view of all these regularities, I hereby move for a dismissal of all charges. I'll take your motion under advisement, Mr. Anderson. This court will stand adjourned until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Daddy, I brought you some coffee. Oh, thank, thank you, Nancy. The scent down. Are you writing your decision? Uh, yes. Oh, I'll bet you're really going to blister that Mr. Anderson. Oh, I hate him. He's so smug. And isn't that Officer Harlow magnificent? Oh, if there were just more cops like him. Uh, darling, you must let me get back to work. I mean, especially on campus. You've no idea what goes on. They sell that filthy stuff as, as openly as if it were ice cream. Yeah, darling, it's getting late. And... Of course you're... You're going to deny the motion. Dear, I'm going over the transcript. That creep was caught cold. Put him in... Oh, there must be the proper legal... Daddy, do you mean that there's a chance that you'll let him get off? Oh, no, no, never. I will do whatever is indicated by the evidence. <laughs> This is a most difficult decision to make. But that is the purpose of justice. It is obvious that the prosecution has not been able to present the basic facts that are necessary in a trial of this nature. Additionally, there are many irregularities and illegal procedures, all of which I've already noted. The court... Therefore, has no choice but to dismiss all charges. Going out again tonight, dear? Yes. Well, don't you have exams tomorrow? I suppose so. Nancy, sit down. Let's talk. About what? You know about what? Ever since the trial... But I don't want to talk about the trial. Well, we'd better, because that's what's been bothering you. What is there to say? You decided on the basis of the evidence, didn't you? You don't believe that. Why shouldn't I believe it? I can tell by the way you're acting toward me. You believe that I took a bribe. Didn't you? No. Good night, Daddy. Now, wait. The evidence could have supported either decision. And you chose the one that could do the most for you. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what made me do that. Well, I do. 
Nancy, please, try to understand. I have to go. I have a date. You read the paper, the Chronicle. The editorial supported my decision. I understand that Big Joe Mangle has money in that paper. The Chronicle is one of the most respected newspapers in the world. Nobody could buy their editorial decisions. Just like nobody could buy your judicial decisions. According to the evidence, Nancy, Joe Mangle Jr. was innocent. Well, I say he's guilty. Guilty of pushing drugs. But the state couldn't prove it. Well, I can prove it. What are you talking about? I may even prove it tonight. Hey, good looking. What's your name? What's it to you? Well, there's a law about gorgeous chicks like you sitting around just hoping. Oh, why don't you move along? You know who I am? I couldn't care less. Joe Mangle Jr. My old man runs this town. Don't tangle with Mangle. See me. However, you can tangle with Mangle Jr. Oh, listen. You got the blues? Take off, will you, please? Listen, I'm a swell guy when you get to know me. And I got just the cure for the blahs. I don't drink. Who's talking about drinking? I got something for you, baby. It's like flying. What have you got for me that'll make me feel like flying? Honey, let's go outside. And we'll fly together. I'm not too sure I know the end of the story. I would like to be able to say she tried it once just to prove something to her father. But I'm not sure that's the way she did it. Or did she do it to confirm for her father that Joe Mangle Jr. was guilty? As we say in a court of law, deponent knoweth not. But I know I'll be back in just a few moments. Once you get past the idea that money is the least of all bribes, then just about everything becomes possible. And just about everybody has his price. And, of course, her price. And sometimes a bribe can be offered in such a way that it doesn't appear to be a payoff at all, but only a natural event. If only things were more simple and direct in life. Our cast included Patsy Bruder, Robert Dryden, Bryna Rayburn, Earl Hammond, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 